Teaching and believing that God is a three-person trinity is dangerous. We're going to see how the false teaching of the trinity can prevent those who believe it from having Eonian life. Trinitarians are constantly accusing non-Trinitarians of not understanding what the trinity is or how it or he operates. Should I call the trinity it or he? It. 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 Let's see how two leading Trinitarians describe their beloved three-person God. This statement on the three-person God is from CARM, which is the Christian Apologetics and Research Ministry. Matt Slick is their top dog, and he wrote this statement on the Trinity. The Trinity is one God in three distinct, simultaneous, eternal persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is monotheism. However, the Father is not the same person as the Son. The Son is not the same person as the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not the same person as Father. They are not three gods nor three beings. They are three distinct persons, yet they are all the one God, divine simplicity. Each has a will can speak, can love, etc., which are demonstrations of personhood. They are in absolute perfect harmony, consisting of one substance, ontological trinity. They are co-eternal, co-equal, and co-powerful. If any one of the three were removed, there would be no God. Oh my God! Clear as mud, huh? Keep in mind these parts of the statement as we proceed. They are not three gods, nor three beings. They are three distinct persons, yet they are all the one God. And if any one of the three were removed, there would be no God. These are foundational beliefs of Trinitarianism. This quote is from the writing of Sam Shamoon, one of the most popular and outspoken defenders of the false three-person God. From its inception, the church has always affirmed a belief in the fact that there is only one true God, and that this one God is an infinite, tri-personal being. Based on the inspired biblical record, the church has both defended and declared its belief that the God of Holy Scripture eternally exists as three distinct yet inseparable persons or centers of consciousness, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please keep these parts of Shamoon's statement in your mind as we proceed. There is only one true God and that this one God is an infinite tripersonal being. And... The God of the Holy Scripture eternally exists as three distinct yet inseparable persons. Trinitarians have to keep up the facade that they are monotheists, meaning they have only one God. So, according to Trinitarians, their one God consists of three persons who are not three individual gods or three individual beings. According to the Trinitarians themselves, Jesus' Father is not God and is not a being. Jesus is not God and is not a being. And the Holy Spirit is not God and is not a being. The three together equal the one being of the one three-person God a.k.a. the Trinity, a.k.a. the Triune God. In reality, Trinitarians are modalists, meaning their one God has three modes or aspects or persons who are not God individually. According to the Trinitarian statements about the nature of the Trinity, when we read the scriptures, anywhere it uses the word God, we should be able to easily insert tripersonal being consisting of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's try that in some verses and see how that goes for the Trinitarians. 1 Corinthians 8, 6 from the Concordant Literal New Testament. Nevertheless, for us there is one God, the Father, out of whom all is. Notice Paul is clear. For us there is one God, the Father. The Father is the one God. This contradicts Trinitarianism, which states the Father is not God by himself, and they say the one God consists of the three persons the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, the Trinitarianized version of this verse. Nevertheless, for us, there is one tripersonal being consisting of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Father, out of whom all is. The Trinitarian version of this verse is a mess, a very messy mess. It equates the Father with the Trinity, which contradicts Trinitarianism. But this is what you get with bad teaching. Stay away from bad teaching. In this verse, Jesus is speaking to his Father. John 17, 3 from the Concordant Literal New Testament. Now it is Aeonian life that they may know thee, the only true God, and him whom thou dost commission, Jesus Christ. 
Jesus addresses his Father as God, the only true God. Remember, according to Trinitarians, the Father is not God. Are you going to believe Matt Slick or Jesus? Let's see the Trinitarian version of this verse. Now it is Ionian life that they may know thee, the only true tripersonal being, consisting of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and him whom thou dost commission, Jesus Christ. This would make Jesus' Father the tripersonal being consisting of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's messy. And is Jesus talking to himself since he is one of the three inseparable persons in the three-person God? Saying God is the Trinity makes a mess of the interactions between the Father and the Son. Paul opened most of his letters with greetings similar to this. Romans 1, 7. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. If God is indeed the three-person God, then this statement from Paul would make the triune God our Father, thus erasing that distinction from the one who separately is called the Father, by us and by Jesus. Now, the Trinitarian perversion, I mean, version. Grace to you and peace from the tripersonal being consisting of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. If the Trinitarians are correct, Paul is including the Son twice in this statement, making the Apostle Paul an honorary graduate of the School of Redundancy School. Are you seeing how the false teaching of Trinitarianism makes a pig pen of the scriptures and leads to mass confusion? This is the last verse I'm going to Trinitarianize, but I could go on for hours showing how silly the Trinity looks when its proponents try to use it to replace the true God. 1 Corinthians 11.3 now I want you to be aware that the head of every man is Christ, yet the head of the woman is the man, yet the head of Christ is God. This verse is telling us that God the Father is the head of Christ the Son. There's no mystery here. This is very simple to understand. This clear statement of truth from the Apostle Paul is turned into a muddy mess when we try to insert Trinitarianism into it. Now I want you to be aware that the head of every man is Christ, yet the head of the woman is the man, yet the head of Christ is the tripersonal being consisting of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This makes the Son, who is one of the three persons in the Trinity, the head of Christ, meaning the head of himself and turns him into two separate people. Keep the Trinity out of your life to maintain your sanity. Beware when listening to or conversing with Trinitarians. They will go against their own stated doctrine, which states the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are not three gods. They contradict themselves when they freely call the Father God, and call the Son God, and call the Holy Spirit God, in addition to calling the three-person being the Trinity God. That's four gods. That's not monotheism, which is the belief in and worship of one God. That's polytheism, which is the belief in or worship of more than one God. But the scriptures frequently call Jesus' Father God, revealing that he by himself is a God. And Jesus by himself is also called God in the scriptures, revealing that he by himself is a God. Paul told us to have a pattern of sound words. Trinitarians ignore Paul and do not have a pattern of sound words when it comes to their abuse of the word God. Sam Shamoon wrote, The God of the Holy Scripture eternally exists as three distinct yet inseparable persons or centers of consciousness, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Matt Slick wrote, If any one of the three were removed, there would be no God. But what if something bad happened to one person of the Trinity? Say, for example, What if one of the persons of the Trinity died? Died. Died. I'll let leading Trinitarian Matt Slick answer that question. The nature and essence of God's divine nature as being Trinitarian, Jesus cannot be separated from God the Father. Otherwise, that would destroy the Trinity. So it's an impossibility. Can you repeat that, please? The nature and essence of God's divine nature as being Trinitarian, Jesus cannot be separated from God the Father. Otherwise, that would destroy the Trinity. So it's an impossibility that would destroy the Trinity.
The Trinitarians have a problem, a big one, because something bad did happen to one of the persons of their three-person God. The Son of God died, and the Trinity was down a man, so the Trinity did not exist for three days. So, if Trinitarianism is true, God did not exist for three days. That's a super massive problem, since the creator and sustainer of all things was destroyed for three days. How do the Trinitarians fix this massive problem for their bad teaching? Again, Mr. Matt Slick and his response to this valid question. Here we see another article by Matt Slick on CARM titled, What Happened to the Trinity When Jesus Died? An objector to the Trinity poses this question. Since you claim that if any one of the three are removed, there would be no God, then what happened for the three days while Jesus was dead? Did the universe cease to exist? The Trinity is a false concept. May Yahweh Elohim rebuke you for the blasphemy you teach. In the name of Yeshua Messiah, let it be done. And here is Matt Slick's response. Unfortunately, this person fails to understand the doctrine of the Incarnation. Jesus has two natures, divine and human. The Bible teaches that Jesus Christ is the Word, which was God, and became flesh and dwelt among us, John 1, 1, and 14. This is why it says in Colossians 2, 9, that in Jesus dwells all the fullness of deity in bodily form. Therefore, we can see that in the one person of Christ are two distinct natures. We do not say that there are two persons, nor do we say that the two natures are mixed up, formed a new third thing, or are not related in the single person known as Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, his human nature died. The divine nature did not die. Therefore, we see that the Trinity never ceased to exist, and this critic's question becomes irrelevant since he demonstrates he does not understand what he is criticizing and is basically attacking a false concept of what the Trinity is. And for good measure, let's see what our homeboy, Sam Shamoon says about this problem for the Trinity. Now, let me repeat how you explain your faith. You ready? Are you ready? Yahweh the Son, to emphasize it wasn't the Father and the Spirit, died a human death without ceasing to be alive. Without ceasing to be conscious. Did you notice Sam's long pause as he tried to think of the right words to say to try to convince his hearers that the Son of God was alive while he was dead? Let's watch that again. <laughs> Yahweh the Son, to emphasize it wasn't the Father and the Spirit, died a human death without ceasing to be <clears throat> alive without ceasing to be conscious. This is cartoonishly comical as one of Orthodox Christianity's leading spokesmen fumbles for the right words to spin this demonic lie regarding the death of Christ. Believing Sam's lie will prevent you from having Eonian life, the special life for those who believe in Jesus in this life. So the Trinitarian answer to this dilemma is that the one person Jesus has two natures, one divine and one human, and only the human part of Jesus actually died. Therefore, they say, the Trinity kept chugging right along as usual, while Jesus' divine part was alive and well for the three days, and Jesus the man was dead for the three days. The problem with this is that the scriptures don't teach that only part of Jesus died. They don't teach anywhere that he had two natures. They teach that he died, as he himself told us. Revelation 1, 17 through 18. And when I, John, perceived him, the risen, glorified Christ, I fall at his feet as dead. And he places his right hand on me, saying, Do not fear, I am the first and the last, and the living one. And I became dead, and lo, living am I for the eons of the eons. Amen. And I have the keys of death and of the unseen. This is the resurrected and glorified Christ speaking to the Apostle John. He is the first and the last and the living one, which are both titles which reveal the divinity or godlikeness of Christ, which is not separate from his humanity, but encompasses it. He is one great being with one great nature. Please don't expand his divinity or godlikeness to being one-third of the mythical trinity in a co-eternal, co-equal, and co-powerful state with his his father, who is by himself the only deity. The Trinitarians say the titles the first and the last and the living one reveal the son's divinity and deity. 
Okay, let's play along with the Trinitarians and ask them, what did the Son of God, the divine deity, say happened to him? The Son tells us, I became dead. Using the Trinitarian's own words, we can say the Son of God said of himself, I, the divine deity, became dead. Uh-oh, bye-bye, Trinity. Bye-bye, God, at least for three days. The Trinity was destroyed for three days. God was destroyed for three days. How in the world did God's creation survive for the three days the one tripersonal God was destroyed? Are you seeing the mess caused by Trinitarianism and its proponents? No, Trinitarians, this is not just the human nature of the Son of God speaking. It is the one only begotten Son of God who had only one unique nature. The fact that he is the first and the last takes us to the fact that he is God's creative original, Revelation 3.14, and he is the firstborn of every creature, Colossians 1.15. This far precedes his being born of a woman and taking on his is humanity. He who is the first and the last is the living one, which he contrasts with his former condition of dead. It was the singular only begotten Son of God who died, not just a part of him, not just his human nature that was distinct from his divine nature. And dead is actually the opposite of living, regardless of what Trinitarians try to force into your brain. Are you going to believe the Pope, Matt Slick, and Sam Shamoon, or are you going to believe the one who actually died and now lives? Orthodox Christianity tells us that when a human dies, he continues living in another form in some other zip code in God's creation, either heaven or hell. Because of this false teaching, even if at death only Jesus' human nature quote-unquote died while his divine nature continued to live on somewhere, both his human nature and his divine nature were still alive somewhere. Did his two natures split and part ways, with one going to Hades and one going to heaven? That would mean Jesus literally became two separate people, not just two separate natures. If Jesus' two natures didn't split into two separate individuals, but both were actually alive, then Jesus didn't actually die, and none of our sins have been taken away. The scriptures teach that God the Father made his Son to be sin for our sakes, 2 Corinthians 5.21. He died, therefore sin died. But if he didn't die according to the scriptural truth of death, sin will endure forever. Then the sin of the world has not been taken away by the Lamb of God who came to take it away. John 1.29 the lie of the two natures of Jesus creates unending questions. The two natures of Jesus' solution doesn't solve anything. It only increases confusion and contradictions while diminishing the sacrificial work of our Savior. This makes our adversary giddy. If you think Jesus didn't actually die, you have a big problem because you don't believe the good news of Jesus and you won't have Eonian life. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Now I am making known to you, brethren, the evangel, or the good news, which I bring to you, which also you accepted, in which also you stand, through which also you are saved, if you are retaining what I said in bringing the evangel to you, outside and accept you believe feignedly. For I give over to you among the first what also I accepted, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was entombed, and that he has been Rouse the third day according to the scriptures. Paul is reminding the Corinthians the good news they heard and the good news they accepted and stand in. It's the good news through which they are saved unless their belief is feigned. Then Paul reminds them of the foundational facts of God's and Christ's work which they accepted. 1. Christ died for our sins. 2. He was entombed. 3. He has been roused the third day. These three foundational facts are non-negotiable and are a package deal. You must believe all of them or you are not a true believer. I've known people who believe Christ died for their sins, but don't believe he was roused the third day. Those people are not believers, therefore they miss out on the salvation of those who believe in this life. That salvation is for Eonian life. Please watch my previous video regarding Eonian life, eternal life, and everything. Everlasting life. And notice, all of these foundational facts are according 
according to the scriptures. Because of widespread false Trinitarian teaching regarding the non-death death of Christ, I'm going to split these three foundational facts into four foundational facts. One, Christ died. Two, Christ died for our sins. Three, he was entombed. Four, he has been roused the third day. And these four facts are according to the scriptures, and they continue to be a package deal. You must believe all of these facts to be a true believer. Because Trinitarians deny the first fact, Christ died, they trip over it, therefore this disqualifies them from belief, thus they are not saved for Eonian life. They will have everlasting life at the consummation of the eons, but will miss out on Eonian life, which includes immortality and incorruption through the next two eons, which will be good eons. Trinitarians can't accept that Christ died according to the scriptures, because that would destroy the Trinity for the three days he was dead. That would mean the tri-personal God did not exist for three days, and that's just plain stupid. That's stupid to the nth degree. He died according to the scriptures. So, what do the scriptures teach us about death and the dead? Jesus, referring back to Exodus 3.6, taught us truth about death and resurrection using Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as the examples in Luke 20. He told the Sadducees who did not believe in resurrection, now that the dead are rousing, even Moses divulges at the thorn bush as he is terming the Lord, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now God is he not of the dead, but of the living, for all to him are living. The word God is from the Greek word theos, which means placer. God is not the placer of the dead, even the quote-unquote good guys who are dead like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Even when Jesus was dead, his father was not his God. He was not his placer, placing him here and there, because God placer is he not of the dead, but of the living. The dead, like Jesus, live only after resurrection, which is the theme of this passage in Luke 20. And this scriptural truth of death is verified in other scriptures which speak of death. The dead don't do anything and aren't being placed by God, the placer, as we see from Ecclesiastes 9. Ecclesiastes 9 verses 4 through 5 and verse 10 from the concordant version of the Old Testament. Indeed, for anyone who is joined with all the living, there is trust, for it is better to be a living cur than a dead lion. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know nothing whatsoever. There is no further reward for them. Indeed, remembrance of them is forgotten. Verse 10. All that your hand finds to do, do it with your vigor, for there is no doing or devising or knowledge or wisdom in the unseen where you are going. Notice that living is better than being dead, even if the living one is a dog and the dead one is a lion, including the lion of the tribe of Judah, the son of God himself. Death is bad. It is not a friend that ushers people into the presence of God the moment they die. Death is an enemy. The dead know nothing whatsoever. There is no doing or devising or knowledge or wisdom in the unseen where you are going. And guess where Jesus went when he died? That's right. According to Acts 2.31, he went to the unseen, also known as Hades in the Greek and Sheol in the Hebrew. Psalm 6.5, For in death there is no remembrance of you. In the unseen, who shall acclaim you? David, the writer of this psalm, like his son Solomon, the writer of Ecclesiastes, knew the truth of death. He knew it was not good and would not be good even for him, one of the good guys. He liked remembering his God, and he liked acclaiming his God. Neither of those would happen if he died. The same was true for the Son of God. He died. Jesus was so dead that he needed his Father to save him out of death. Hebrews 5, 7. Jesus, in the days of his flesh, offering both petitions and supplications with strong clamor and tears to him who is able to save him out of death, being hearkened to also for his piety. If the divine part of Jesus was going to still be alive while the man part of Jesus was dead, why did he pray to his father, the one who is able to save him out of death? Couldn't the divine Jesus save the dead man Jesus out of death? Apparently not. The false teaching of the Trinity strikes again making a confusing mess out of what actually happened to the Son of God. Simply put, Jesus died, and his Father saved him out of death three days later. It's not complicated unless you are trying to slip a terrible, false, demonic doctrine like the Trinity into God's scriptures. God, Jesus' Father, who is the only true God and the only deity, was alive and well while his Son was dead for three days. The Trinitarian God was not destroyed for three days while Jesus was dead because the Trinitarian God is a myth. God the Father is more than able to run his creation without his Son. 
Trinitarianism is a demonic rabbit hole of a doctrine that will lead you into confusion and error and a denial of basic scriptural facts. One of the most basic facts it denies is that Christ died. Christ died, he was dead, all of him, not just part of him. If you don't believe this, you won't have Ionian life. In addition to believing he died, you must believe he died for your sins, was entombed, and was saved out of death three days later by his father. The Trinity is a brilliant trick of the adversary, and it keeps millions, maybe even billions, from believing the plain and simple good news that Paul preached, the good news of Christ's death for sins, entombment, and resurrection. Don't swallow the Trinity. It's bad for your health. Dine on the truth. Believe in Jesus today and be sealed with the Holy Spirit, which guarantees you Ionian life and early immortality. Thanks for watching. I recommend this video to you next, and you can also check out this playlist on the Trinity.